Yeah, I, I'm a conceptual artist and I tend to be attracted towards working with very new technologies, mostly as a way of understanding and exploring how our world is gonna change and how we will see things in a new way. So Bitcoin came, came to me in graduate school when I was studying art, but I had previously studied finance and so it was very, um, very much attuned to thinking artistically about the notion of value. Value doesn't exist in a vacuum. It exists in a moment of exchange, which is fundamentally an act of representation. One is in the place of the other. And taking exchange and representation that as a point of departure toward to think about how to formulate an artwork that was meant to be a prediction actually brought me to crypto because I heard about Bitcoin and thought it was amazing. And so as the story now goes, I forked Bitcoin in 2014, called it Bitchcoin, right? A play on, a play on words, right? Uh, borrowing a little bit of the status of Bitcoin. Also the sort of meme of dogs and like a kind of, you know, hyper aggressive feminine angle as well. And I thought, well, how am I gonna give this any value? And so I decided to back it at a fixed rate by my photography, which I titled Speculations. And both the plan words on, you know, a cryptocurrency backed by speculation, but also the series was made with two-way mirrors. So specular, um, it, this would make sense if you see one of the photographs. So that was Bitcoin at its inception. At its inception, it was proposing to take art and fractionalize it and put it on a blockchain. And this was done before Ethereum. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. The notion of fractionalizing, um, it's a funny thing because now we have these NFT collections that are, you know, each piece is unique, but they're part of, you know, this giant collection. So they almost count as fractions in my mind as well. The thought of fractionalizing is really to make something tradable um, so that there are more of them that are alike. And I then, you know, to take Bitcoin onto Ethereum since Ethereum fulfilled, right, with, with its functionality, the hopes that Bitcoin had laid out, I did this project, which um, is called Cloud of Petals, where I had 16 men photograph 100,000 rose petals and pick one per rose that they considered most beautiful, which is like a proof of work. And so each bitch coin is backed by one pressed rose petal. And if you think of it, you can, you can think of it kind of like fractions because all of the petals are part of this one giant piece. Um, but they're also individual. So this idea of, of fractionalizing is kind of a funny thing in the NFT world. I'm working on a few things. I'm, one, I'm, I'm actually working on a feature film and hope to get that off the ground. And it's an adaptation of the myth of Medusa set in the perfume industry, which is very much in the same at least sphere of subject matter as Bitcoin and Cloud of Petals, right? There is um, an engagement with like the image um, and uh, like female power and the image, how they relate, right? Medusa is really a story about one type of female power, which is uncontrolled and enraged, pitted against Athena, right, which is a very different type of female power. It also very much has to do with commerce and finance, like, you know, perfume is a real industry. It gets, you know, there's an amazing uh, process from the agriculture and the chemistry and the dis distribution for a bottle to be at duty-free at the airport. So while it's not really completely related to crypto, 
it's engaging in similar themes and I will probably use crypto as a way of uh, funding this movie. I'm also going to be working on a few other drops, one probably around the AI pedals that I had generated from Clada pedals and a few other kind of secret projects. Yeah, I think it, I think I'm really hard on myself. <laughs> I have really high standards for what an artwork should be. General rule of thumb is that if you can write an article about what you want to say as an artwork, then you should write an article and not make an artwork. I think art that succeeds for me is art that functions across many levels. It has to function visually, so I am really interested in making things that are fundamentally just beautiful. Then I want to make things that are intellectually interesting, which means that you cannot, that at least in today's world, uh, remaining purely in kind of just the studio and abstraction is is not enough for me. I like to bring kind of the texture of what's happening in our society into the work. And three, I do want to touch people emotionally and sometimes the best way to do that is to insert something that's perhaps um, like more subconscious influences or something grittier or something that doesn't quite fit, right? Art doesn't need to make sense and it doesn't need to uh, be, yeah, it doesn't need to be linear. Um, in fact, it shouldn't be. There can be inconsistencies within an artwork. And so getting, getting all of those pieces together and feeling like you're touching kind of the boundary of what's possible, which is fundamentally doing something that's like avant-garde, is the challenge I set for myself. And that tends to mean doing things that are deeply humanist and also technologically very forward. And that combination is usually where something new can happen for me. And right now, Right, I'm, I'm very much in the NFT space, but the NFT space has now arrived, right? I made Bitcoin before the word NFT existed. The NFT world is now here. It's now a tool. It's now a different financial system for artists to uh, distribute their work. I'm actually now quite interested in the future of augmented reality and um, AI and creat creativity and new types of like literally glass, right? Um, and how we're gonna experience augmented reality in the future. So maybe those things will not come to pass, but that's, that's what keeps me up these days. My muse is, my muse, this is gonna sound so bizarre and corny, but my muse is truth. I want to make things that are true and, uh, and that are fundamentally honest in their approach. That doesn't mean that I don't touch like satire and humor and, as I said, like creative misinterpretation, but I, I am not, um, I'm not interested in like, you know, a gotcha game if that makes any sense. I'm, I'm interested in, in making things that are really, in a sense, uplifting. Uh, so, yeah, truth. I think that events in person are important. Um, there is so much information that we communicate in person that we maybe now aren't attuned to think about. Like even just body language and eye contact. Uh, these things like can speak volumes. And in some ways, crypto has liberated us a little bit from 
from the sort of social pressure of in-person activities and has created a new form of socialization. But fundamentally, I think the best things happen in person and the deepest connections are made in person. So bringing everybody together is, is, is like so important. <laughs>